I, I feel like we should start with Seth because we all know this begins with the the script. And I know you co-wrote this with your writing partner, yeah. Will Tracy. Can you tell us what was sort of the initial inspiration behind this movie? Well, my co-writer, Will, was uh, on his honeymoon in Norway with his wife, and he took a boat to a restaurant <laughs> on an island. The same thing didn't happen to Will because he's alive. <laughs> and um, and But he's actually kind of a bit of a claustrophobe, and he was kind of freaked out by the experience of just being on this island for four hours and sort of entrusting his live livelihood to these people. And at one point he just, you know, turned to his wife and said, I actually think this would be a cool start, germ of an idea um, for a movie. And Betsy, for you, how did this project find its way to you and, and what interested you in being a part of it? This was just a, a classic incoming script from Will's agent. Um, and I read it four years ago uh, and it was, obscenely well-written and McKay, Adam McKay is uh, the producer of the film alongside me. And he, he and I just devoured it. Um, <laughs> and so hard not to do food I puns. had to yeah, stop myself so from tough. it's a delicious um, movie. Yeah, but it, it, it was um, just like nothing we had really read before. And then from there, it was about sitting down with directors. And it was certainly this beloved script around town that had a lot of fans and was on the blacklist and all of that. Um, and so a lot of people were raising their hand and Mark was Mark Mylod, who does our show Succession. Mark was really the first director that we sat down with who had a similar version of the movie in his head that we did in ours. And he really understood how to like capture that kind of sense of dread and anticipation and marry that with the biting satire and biting humor. Um, and that was so important was somebody needs to understand where the comedy comes from for this movie. And that's a real kind of high wire act to pull off, I feel like, because the tone is really tricky. Um, and he did it beautifully. And Ethan, I, I love this. I heard that this movie combined your two loves, film and food, which are two of mine. Um, so is it sort of a no brainer when you read this script? Or did you start getting excited about all the things you could do with the design and the food? Yeah, I mean, I think food making and filmmaking are really, really similar. They're both, um, and, and when I was a struggling filmmaker trying to make a name for myself, I worked in a lot of restaurants um, and kind of almost fell into that career trajectory because it was the first time I felt like you were part of this transient community of instant families creating an ephemeral experience that's very lush and detailed, but ultimately artificial. And the minute it's over, you kind of wish that you could go back to it. And what does that sound like? It sounds like <laughs> filmmaking. So... Um, they're really, really, really similar experiences. And the idea of being able to combine like my two favorite things in one was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie actually gets food culture and, and foodies so authentically. Did that begin in the writing and the production? Because I know you had, you must have had real consultants. It definitely began in the writing. But then in terms of consultants, we had an amazing, one of the most amazing chefs in the entire universe. Yes, uh, named Dominique Crenn, who has three Michelin stars. She works in San Francisco. But what's cool about Dominique is that she doesn't make food the way that Chef Slowick makes food. Her food is warmer. Uh, Chef's food is colder. And so she actually kind of had to get into character <laughs> to create dishes that Chef Slowick would create. And I think that was a challenge that she quite relished because uh, she's she's an artist and she wanted to try something new and she was amazing to have on set. And then we had David Gelb, who is the creator of Chef's Table, do our second unit. And so he and Chloe Weaver shot all of the food porn shots. And it was the entire time we were trying to kind of rip off his style and we're like, let's just get the guy who does the thing. Um, and so he came on after the fact and shot all those like very dreamlike sort of food porny shots. This is like, this is like Nancy Meyer's dream kitchen. This thing is so beautiful. I, I want it so badly. Um, I'm curious if you can talk about designing something that not only looks phenomenal, but it's actually practical. Yeah. Um, so we're making our artificial restaurant at the height of the Delta resurgence when every single restaurant in America is trying to reopen and is buying the highest end Dutch ovens and six tops and 
French friars at the same time that we're trying to do it for our artificial movie. So that was really, really challenging. And we had to like fight for the last fridge and fight for the last stove and convince them like, we'll sell it back to you in six months. Um, but one of the things that we found most interesting when we were researching this, because we knew we wanted to make a fully functional kitchen and we knew authenticity was paramount, was we went into the backs of restaurants high and low and um, three star, one star McDonald's. We went everywhere. We were so curious to see how every kitchen was designed. And sure enough, we discovered they're exactly the same. Every kitchen is ultimately sacrificing a square inch for just one extra table or chair. Um, the aggregate profit of one chair over the course of a fiscal year in a high stakes restaurant is $300,000 per chair. So if you can push one more lineman to be elbow to elbow with another chef on the line, you will because it means just one more meal that you can serve that justifies the entire operation's existence. So that was really interesting for us to explore and to make, to balance the difference between something that was small enough to look real and big enough to be practical to actually shoot. And I don't know if this is just a, a restaurant thing or if it was specific for this movie, but it feels like a church to some degree. I don't know. So glad was... you saw that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're the first person to say that. The, no, so the, no, you're kidding. No. Well, the idea for the kitchen for me was for, for it to be ecclesiastical. I want him to feel like a priest at a pulpit. So there's a, it's a salt box frame and there's a giant cross behind him and he's, his floor is built a little higher than all the other chefs. Cause I, loved the idea that all these junior chefs are like genuflecting to him. So yeah, no, very much. It's, it's meant to feel like a place of worship. It's cultish and it's definitely inspired by the feeling you get in some of these kitchens where yeah. you feel like, okay, this person's like a deity and they're exalted, but they're also like, you know, they have a lot more power than maybe a human being should have. Uh, you've talked about this amazing cast and it's just every role is cast so perfectly. Um, I want to start with Ray Fiennes because it's, it's rare that you have that combination of instant gravitas, but then yeah. also that subversive humor. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, was he the first person cast? Uh, yes. I mean, well, I know there was, there, there was a moment when Will and I were writing, when we were writing that we just, we just knew this, this is Ray Fiennes. <laughs> and what's wonderful about him is he can be menacing and jaunty mm. at the same time. So the movie, it's dark, but because we're riding along with him, it still stays funny. And so he's so integral to the tone we're trying to achieve. Like Anya and the way Mark films Anya, I think is absolutely incredible in the movie. She holds down and anchors the movie. And without her, I think the movie would have... Yeah. And she, uh, she, she's, she's, she's incredible. What she's doing with her face uh, is, I think, brilliant. How many drafts do you think you went through before Just one. You were shooting? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just one. Uh, yeah, we, we sold the outline. <laughs> there was just a rough, rough outline. No, I mean, like, uh, I, I don't know how many drafts, but I do know that the, the movie, the, it got more sophisticated as time went on, it got a little, it got less, it got less violent. The themes that I was talking about came out more and more. Um, so that's what I'm most proud of. But like, you know, it was more just how do we keep on chipping away to make it more sophisticated, to make these people more aware of themselves and more human and yeah. It got less violent? What's that? Less? Oh yeah, yes. The first, the first draft was more violent. Um, and I'm glad it got less violent. I think the, the less violent it got, uh, I, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but the more sophisticated it got. And then just the threat of violence was more Im impactful than actual violence. After you, after the sort of the gunshot and the finger slice, nothing really, ha nothing really happens to the diners from the staff until the very end. But at the very end, they kind of accept their fate. Yeah. There's a couple people who say, we love you too, chef, along with the chef who are in the restaurant because the chef has made quite a compelling argument mm -hmm. for why this should happen. And Ethan, for you, was there a particular set or art piece? There's so much to stare at in this movie. When you're designing a space that is a character in the film and predominantly your sole location for the majority of the, of the, of the script, how do you make that interesting? How do you keep it um, layered? How do you peel them back to maintain audience interest, but also to tell you something about characters that are mysteries and you don't want to reveal too much about them. Um, 
I couldn't have done this movie without having done the movie Room, mm -hmm. where you're largely in a 10 by 10 by 10 box. Because on that film, I learned the smaller the set, the more interesting the set. The details become planets and solar systems. They're, every detail in every set can be shot as its own planet. Um, and so, you know, really when you're approaching a movie like this, especially with a script that's so rich with characters that are each onions that need to be unpeeled, um, the, the restaurant has to be a layered person too. And so like approaching it with the respect of every surface and every choice having merit and having a, a narrative reason, that's really, really challenging, but also like so fun when you're working with people you trust and who up your ante every day. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for a great movie. Thanks. Thank you.